In a now classic article in the August 1981 issue of the ham radio magazine QST called The Ugly Weekender, the father and son team of Roger and Wes Hayward described the design and construction of a simple low-power ham radio transmitter. Ugly referred to the method of construction where parts are soldered directly to a bare printed circuit board. This technique is efficient, effective, flexible, and quick. The second part of the name refers to the fact that it could be built and on the air in a weekend. It uses commonly available and inexpensive parts, most of which should be in a hands well stacked junk box. It features VFO frequency control and CW output on the 40 meter band with about one and a half watts of output power. It can also receive single sideband signals but not AM. It offers low power consumption and small size making it suitable for battery powered portable operation. It has shaped keying and electronic TR switching and only requires seven transistors. It's recommended to be built on two boards, one for the VFO and control and one for driver and power amp. The author's prototype was built into two small metal cases bolted together. In June 1992, a follow-up article was published entitled The Ugly Weekender 2, Adding a Junk Box Receiver. This showed how to expand the design into a complete direct conversion transceiver. Using the VFO and keying circuits from the transmitter, it adds a product detector, audio amplifier, muting circuit, side tone generator, and crystal calibrator to implement a direct conversion receiver for the 40 meter band. It offers electronic semi-break-in operation. The receiver uses 11 transistors, all commonly available 2N3904s, and an LM386 audio amp IC to drive headphones or a small speaker. This is my version of the Ugly Weekender transceiver. I built it into a single case. It was larger than necessary but I was not aiming for portable operation and this made it easier to get at all the circuitry for modifications and testing. I used three circuit boards as in the original design, two for the transmitter and one for the receiver functions. Mine took much longer to build than a weekend given that parts had to be found and ordered and this was my first significant foray into ugly construction. Here's a look inside. From left to right we have the receiver board with crystal calibrator and side tone oscillator, then the VFO and control board, and finally the driver and power amplifier. I followed the design with no significant changes except for a few small component substitutions. I implemented the crystal calibrator using a 7.040 MHz crystal I had handy. I used an 8 to 1 vernier dial to extend the range of the tuning knob. I get about 3 watts out at full drive level but I adjusted it for 1.5 watts as recommended in the article. When adjusted so that the low end of the tuning is, is 7.0 MHz, I get an upper frequency range of about 7.120 MHz, giving me pretty good coverage of the CW portions of the 40 meter band. There are some microphonics when the gain is turned up high. This is an inherent problem in direct conversion receivers where most of the amplification is at the audio level. A digital dial could be added and would be a nice and inexpensive option, but the electronics inside the digital dial is at least 10,000 times as complex as the rest of the radio and takes away from the simplicity of the design. Here it is set up for operation. On the rear panel we have simply an antenna connector and wires for the 12 volt DC power. The front panel controls include power, volume control, LEDs for power and transmit operation, and the main tuning knob. There are connectors for headphones and the code key. The cal button turns on the crystal calibrator, which in my case is a 7.040 MHz crystal. You can use it to confirm that the tuning is where it is to be expected. In my case, just about the center of the dial. During transmit, the VFO shifts by about 600 Hz from the frequency on receive so that you hear a beat frequency. The spot switch shifts the VFO on receive so you can zero beat the radio against the signal being received.
I encourage you to try building this transceiver. While printed circuit boards are available, the ugly construction style is highly recommended. No special equipment is needed to align it. You can build just the transmitter or the entire transceiver. There's nothing like the thrill of building a transceiver from scratch, from ordering parts to planning the layout of the boards and front panel, and then seeing it work on the air.